everyone I'm trying to wave at you because i'm not on the camera today my face isn't anyway so i'm going to talk through techniques i'm going to try and keep it quick but there's quite a lot i could cover so i'm just going to do a snapshot of a few and hope that that's enough you can always ask me questions in the q a if you want to know more about anything or you're struggling with anything and want some help so um, I'll quickly talk about brushes. What I'll do is I'll, I don't know all the names and stuff, but I will talk about the brushes that I use. So this is a watercolor brush. Um, it's got finer bristles, so it's better for watercolor. Um, I'll show you my little pot. I've got loads. I mean, I've got loads of brushes. These are just more or less the watercolor ones. Although that is a house painting brush. But I use these um, for my, I do use these in my work, less for illustration work, more for painting on canvas. Um, as you see, some of these are quite old and a bit scrappy. But the way I work, um, I'm not always that delicate, really, with my painting. So these brushes are quite good for me because a lot of my work's about texture. Um, but I do have some finer ones. All my little Diddy ones are sort of dying a little bit. Can you see that's <laughs> not very good quality anymore? But as you can see, I don't um, oh look, that one's chopped off. <laughs> I've cut that one off. Um, I might use things like that for little dots and things like that. So I think I need to throw some of these away actually. Look, this has got longer, that's quite good for long strokes. So when you're doing a long stroke, a long line. Um, and then I think I mentioned in some a couple of my other videos that I use hog's hair brushes quite a lot. These are my granddad's brushes, uh, which I still use. And I mentioned that I use toothbrush, fork, uh, sponges. They're good for dabbing in the paint and then making stamps. Uh, right. So, I'm going to start with acrylics, and I'm going to use the palette that I just made for the colour video. So, with acrylics, they're good because you can add water to them, and you can use them almost like watercolour. They dry very quickly, so if you have a palette like this, um, at the end of the day, I would put some... Um, cellophane over it because it keeps the air out and it will keep it um, moist for a few days but what I'd suggest is not putting too much paint on your palette so that if it does dry out it doesn't really matter if you lose it if it goes hard so yeah these are acrylic paints you might have um, poster paints or other runny paints they should work in a similar way they're probably all acrylic based I'd imagine um, you might have um, runny watercolour paints, so you can get watercolour paints in tubes. So they would work in a similar way. Um, so let's just show you. So I like acrylics because they're a little bit um, transparent. Like with gouache paints, which I don't, I used to use more. That's flat colour, whereas acrylics you can really add a lot of water to it. You see how it looks watercolory. So I'm just, I've put a bit on there and then I'm just adding water to that. And as you can see, I'm not doing it very neatly. You might be a neater person than me. Or you can put it on with no water. And then you get the bolder, stronger colour. And then... Because they dry so quickly, um, they're good for layering up. Now, I won't be able to show you because this isn't quite dry, but you can layer on top quite nicely, which I do a lot of in my work. So, um, like brush techniques, I think you just need to get a feel for how the brushes work. If you haven't used... If you haven't painted much before, 
And then I'd practice doing some lines, some dots, some bigger shapes, just to see how the brush works. Generally, if you're trying to paint more delicately than I do, um, you sort of start by pressing down and lifting up, pressing down, round, lifting up. It's like drawing, it is like drawing with a pencil almost, but not quite. It's just a matter of getting used to it. And finding some control, which really is just practice. But if you're like me, I just like the splashes of colour and I literally just sort of scribble it on. And then when it dries, I might add something over the top of that um, or like different art materials. It doesn't have to all be acrylic. Look at that yellow, that's so gorgeous. Okay, so I think acrylic wise, that's it. You can use it dark, you can use it with water. That's quite a good sized brush to use, but if you've got smaller ones, it's, it feels like it's breaking. Smaller ones obviously do finer lines. Just practice doing little lines cross hatching so you cross over basically drawing is just lines and shapes or you could say it's just shapes <laughs> because I guess a line is a very thin straight shape isn't it so practice shapes circles are good to practice they'll be quite hard to do if you're just starting. Just try out the paints and have some fun. Okay, so I think I need to move on. <laughs> What's the time? Yeah, seven minutes, wow. Okay, take that one off. Okay, so let's try, oh, actually I was gonna show you these letters. I did these apart from the sign. I did these with acrylic, so the background is acrylic, just sort of with water, and then once that's dry, almost almost pure with no water, acrylic paint, allow it to dry, and then added the white, put the pink on, allowed it to dry. Some acrylic paints are more see-through than others, so some will come out a little bit more matte and opaque. And some will be a bit more see-through and you'll see the brush marks. But I like that. I like seeing the brush marks. And there's another one. That's a bit more opaque. It's the same. Uh, yeah, all done with acrylics. Okay. Maybe you've got some crayons or oil pastels. Do you have oil pastels? Um, these are great because you can just, I used to use these loads when I was doing my GCSEs and A-level art, practically all I used was um, acrylic paints and oil pastels over the top. You see, you can, you can just get a really nice texture from them. I think you can blend, I don't like, <laughs> I don't like the feel of it on my fingers, sort of feels a bit like you know scratching down a blackboard to me but um yeah I like the texture so you could you know if you had a black you can draw with these and yes it's quite thick but you can get some really nice lines with them don't want to focus on these too much because I don't think loads of people will have them um but they're a really nice pop of colour And you can do them over, let's see, let's do an orange, do them over the top of here. The only thing is with oil pastels you can't really paint over the top 
of them. They have to be the last thing that you put on because because they're made of oil. Acrylic doesn't really stick to them very well. I think if it's a little bit, it's all right. Um, I've also got these Neo Color water soluble crowns. These are great. Um, so if you wanted to buy some art materials, these are really fun because they come in really nice colours. And they're like the oil pastels, but they're because they're water based. I'm just going to do some. Again, you can draw with these, and it just gives a nice line. Uh, I'll just do a few colours because they're water soluble, so I'll show you that. Do it softly. Let's do a blue. Or really hard to get a more opaque colour. I'm just trying them out really. There's no finesse needed for this bit. Okay, so water. You see how it's blending? So they're really good. And quite often I might blend a bit but then leave some because I like the texture of the crayon. Maybe I'll blend that bit around the box. But if you, again, if you add too many colours um, and then put water all over it, it will just become really muddy. Like the colours will just become muddy. So be careful where you add the water. And I'll just show you the oil colours, they don't see, they sort of repel, repel the water because they're oil based. Okay, so those were Neo Colour, they're um, not advertising because don't get any money for it. <laughs> um, right, else? okay, so... Uh, colouring pencils. I often use colouring pencil, normal colouring pencils in my work. Again, usually to go over the top of painting. But these are the water soluble ones, which I know not everyone will have. But these are great too. So yeah, you can use them just as a pencil. Can you see how I'm going for all the same colours? Let's try a different colour. Purple. And then, yeah, quite often I'll leave it. Yeah, quite often I don't. Yeah, I don't use water with these so much. But yeah, you can add water, and it sort of looks makes it look like watercolor paints. Although again, look, it's going muddy, so you do have to be careful. Like I'd keep it away from that purple bit. Looks like watercolor paints. That's quite an easy way to go into watercolor by using the pencils. Felt tips. I don't think I need to show much on these, but I do use felt tips. Um, oh, these are fine liners, but I do have other pens, like brush pens and things. Um, once this is all dry, I could go in and just sort of add things over the top. Like actually draw on top of the paint. Again, I wouldn't draw on top of the oil pastel because it will ruin your pens because it's oil based, um, it will clog up the tip. So don't go near the oil pastels, but or crayons, because they'll do the same. So keep your felt tips away from crayons. So yeah, I mean, felt tips are great. I use them for line work and for coloring in, just to get color on the page really. Watercolour. I think watercolours are a bit of a longer video. So I will leave it at that for now. And homework for today is to basically try out all your materials, practice using them. Um, I, I don't know if you're going to have lots of brushes and things, but um, try out little brushes, bigger brushes, See what you like working with. What gives you the most joy? There's 
there's absolutely no I use a lot of materials but there's no reason why you can't just stick to one material if that's the one that you like um, everybody is different so just have fun with it there's no rules you don't need to look at one person's work and think oh I have to use watercolour because I want to be like them you just do what makes you happy basically and you'll find your own way with that just so just play basically just have a play try out the different papers I haven't showed you papers have I so just quickly this is just cartridge paper but can you see the thickness it's a decent thickness and then this I'm going to show you to compare is um, computer paper so you can use you could probably use the crayons and the pencils and things on there but no, nothing wet so no paint or adding water to anything because it will just go mushy and it it won't hold its shape um yeah that's more cartridge paper see the sort of thickness this is watercolour paper I quite you can get cheap watercolour paper it's sort of a mix of cotton and watercolour but this is actually the proper stuff and you can get bump there's cold pressed and hot pressed I actually prefer cold this is hot pressed because it's smoother and this is cold pressed because it's bumpy I prefer cold pressed but again everyone's different I like the way the paint sits on it better right I'm going over time so I'm going to stop um, I hope that's helpful. So yeah, this week it's just playing and setting up really. Um, but again, think of any questions you might have me have for me in the live Q and A, and I can try and show you um, some painting techniques if if that's what you'd like. Okay, thank you. Bye.